So video games are art, um, and I've had a few experiences, unfortunately, that uh, made me less confident that everyone felt this way. Um, and I'm talking about experiences with people like outside of the kind of tightly knit uh, bubble of people who like grew up with and uh, really love video games. Um, people who aren't artists are really like uh, seek out strange uh, types of media to uh, consume. Um, I'm talking about like you're kind of a everyday average normal person. Um, so I was the scenario was I was sitting down with my friend and her mom for lunch once, and uh, somehow we got on the subject of what I do. Uh, and unsurprisingly, five minutes in, like um, uh, we, we get up on the subject of like our video games art, and which like talking to me for five minutes, you'll probably get on the subject anyway. Um, but uh, but th th when the question came up, she kind of asked like, are they like uh, like I never really thought about that, um, but. She had no idea how much of a rabbit hole that question was bound to get us into. Um, but uh, so yeah, I kind of go in this huge diary to like explain uh, like why they are, um, and I don't know how much of it stuck because like when you ask when you question my like medium like that, I guess what you're gonna get back is pretty much a rant at that point. Um, and so uh, I explained why, and she seems to she seemed to understand, uh, but then she said those oh so dreaded words. Uh, I have a 13-year-old son that plays Fortnite. Um, and so panic kind of sets in. I, I, like, how do I uh, express to this, uh, this caring mother uh, that there exist games where um, you don't just shoot people? Like, that's not the main, that's not all this medium has to offer. Um, how do I tell her there's this game called Mountain by David O'Reilly where you peacefully observe a mountain that, uh, that ponders its existence? How do I say, like, there's a game called I Am Bread where you play as a piece of bread that gains sentience and uh, wanders its way through the kitchen? Uh, or a game where you play with your food with no violence and, and no way to play it wrong, only, like, open-ended, um, like, expression of just playing with your food. Um, so kind of weird examples, I know, but uh, but like, how do I tell everyone that um, these uh, experimentations and expressions are all valid things that uh, elevate this medium to art? Uh, is that the second a game pops up in a museum? Because like, plenty of games have been in museums before. Um, some of the first video games that were being made for these huge arcade cabinets quickly made it to uh, museums, like in the uh, early '80s, and they were being treated as these like new amazing feats in technology. Um, and uh, despite the uh, limits in like their processing power, like aesthetics were already starting to emerge in this very like uh, kind of primitive uh, uh, like start to this medium. Um, and so uh, it's amazing to me that like uh, being shown in these huge art spaces, we're still confused as to whether or not these are art. Um, uh, on top of this, uh, the same debate was also happening in uh, courts. Um, we were kind of asking, should games legally be uh, recognized as art uh, and be uh, protected under the American uh, First Amendment of um, right of free speech? Um, 
And so uh, when I was researching this, I found uh, apparently one trial happened in uh, St. Louis, which is my hometown. Um, it was interesting to me because uh, this was like a 2002 trial, and like at the time, my city definitely was like kind of the middle of nowhere when it came to tech. So that that was just a that kind of caught me off guard. Um, but that aside, this trial, um, uh, just like another that occurred in the late 90s, ruled that uh, uh, quote just like bingo, they failed to see how uh, games express ideas or uh, emotion or significant uh, messages. No different from games like chess or pinball or like organized sports, which uh, I, I think there's just already so much wrong with that sentence because uh, like each one of those things are creations that have such a history um, and it's incredibly frustrating to see how little validity they receive in these settings. Um, I mean, like, they didn't even get the names right of the games that they studied in these cases. Uh, they called Resident Evil, uh, what do they call it? The Resident of Evil Creek is what they called it. I, I really don't know where they got that from. Um, but yeah, it was the most, like, clueless dad trying to understand, like, kids these days type of uh, moment, like, that happened in court. Uh, it, it was quite funny. Um, and so uh, it wasn't until 2011's uh, Brown versus... Um, uh, Entertainment uh, Merchants Association that games are actually granted this uh, First Amendment protection as uh, free speech, which is strange because like I didn't hear much about it at the uh, time. Um, that like uh, it's really a testament to how new of a medium games are that like they weren't even considered uh, free speech in America until like seven years ago. It's, so yeah, that's quite. Uh, interesting, and so uh, they ruled that uh, just like books and movies uh, and um, mediums that precede it, um, games uh, communicate ideas using liter literary devices, um, such as like characters, plots, themes. Um, but like, I feel like I could have told them that like games have had these things for a while. Uh, plus, they're interactive. Like, how isn't that art? Uh, I feel like. Um, but legal legal stuff aside, um, from a personal standpoint, like I really saw the potential for uh, games as art um, when I start when I started seeing games take techniques from uh, other mediums. Um, I find that video games have a huge respect for things like uh, film and, in a lot of ways, photography. Um, but like we didn't quite know what we were doing like right away. Um, in 2004, we discovered this amazing technique called Bloom, where uh, any pixel or point of light above a certain brightness kind of gets this glow around it. Um, and it's just like photographing a, a spot that gets like, uh, that's like way bright, like a sun shaft or something, uh, and it kind of goes out of range. And when we discovered this, games industry was like, oh my goodness, that's, that looks amazing. Put that slider all the way up, and then we ended up with messes like this. Uh, and this, <laughs> where like uh, the player kind of kind of can't really see anything, and this guy looks like he's like a solar flare, and just like the sun's like just way too bright. It's, we went a bit crazy with that. Um, at some point, we discovered color grading. Um, uh, this is a film event, so hopefully, maybe some of you uh, know a bit about this. Um, and so yeah, this has been a part of like photography and film for so long, and you can really convey a mood of a scene through a very subtle color changes. But it took some trial and error to figure this out because uh, players were often complaining, um, "Hey, it looks like my game has a the Instagram filter over it. Can I please like turn this off or something?" Um, so that's kind of how that went. Uh, and then for better or worse, we discovered uh, uh, about a decade ago something called motion blur. Um, and we were just like so excited about simulating the effects of like camera imperfections um, that like we didn't realize uh, it, these things were unfortunately really easy to abuse. Um, like uh, of course, like I kind of thought this like it looked really cool. It was like okay, the games are starting to look like those like Pixar uh, rendered animations uh, that like real time graphics have been trying to catch up for, to for so long. Um, but uh, when you're kind of, this technique like smears um, frames, like uh, it smears the image across multiple frames uh, to kind of give it that effect. And it's kind of hard to do that right when you're just like adding blur to an otherwise clear image. Um, and I, the only, like the best example of this I could find had a gun in it. So if that's not something that like really says something about the state of games right now. Um, uh, but d even despite all these tech advances, we're still seeing like retro games pop up all the, all the time. Uh, games trying to emulate the styles of uh, consoles of previous generations uh, because of the limitations of all the hardware uh, really um, 
force developers to come up with creative ways uh, to fit everything into like a tiny cartridge, for example. Uh, just imagine if you are a painter, but uh, you only get so many strokes, you have to optimize each one and make every single one count. Um, but uh, these technologies are getting so amazing, but uh, one of the, my best, uh, in my opinion, one of the best looking games um, that I really love is a game from 2009, which like, it wasn't about like, the amazing graphics tech that they had at the time. Um, it was all about um, what they did with that and the color palettes that they chose and just the design decisions that they made. Um, it really made this game stand out to me. Um, and so I, I really hope that we start talking about like video game graphics as if it's part of art history. And like art history is a huge subject, but uh, I think that um, there's space for uh, this um, medium between uh, technology and art. Um, and when we start blurring those uh, lines together, um, I really believe that that's when we'll start innovating in both of these uh, fields combined. So uh, I'm TJ Hughes, and uh, yeah, that's my talk about video games. <laughs>